welcome back. Picking up where we left off here in West Penn Crossing. I've worked on a little bit more in the way of scenery and some detail, so we'll cover those things. First of which, I'll just kind of move through heading northbound on the railroad. So, got some of the siding on at least one of the Pullman Standard buildings. It is just cardstock spray painted and then adhered with uh, spray adhesive to the masonite. Also have the first of 10 windows that I created with uh, some brass wire and tubing. Added some additional details, some 2x4s and some scrap materials. Some of that's glued down permanently, some is just laying there till I figure out exactly where I want everything. Also, uh, a little bit hard to see there, but did some utility poles as well. Some detail here at PPC Lubricants, some 2x4s, pallet, some packaging material. And also, did a little sign so that people not familiar with the railroad will be able to figure out which industries they're supposed to be switching. And also made a guide rail also using phosphor bronze wire and square brass stock. Again, adding some of the details really is helping some of the scenes come together a little bit. Also, finally finished up the propane tanks, so those are all painted, weathered, dull coated. Um, I also did all the yard piping out of phosphor bronze wire because the Walther's kit, I don't know if their dies are just not registered properly, but some of the tubing, you could see the two semicircles uh, on the, the piping uh, were offset a little bit, so I just rather than uh, even if I trimmed those and filed them and sanded them, it would have been an, uh, an ovoid rather than a, a circular cross section. So I just prepared some uh, bronze wire, soldered it together, used some square bronze tubing or brass tubing rather to create the loading rack. Used some, some thick uh, black insulated wire to create the fill and air relief hoses. Pair pair of spare hoses on the ground. Just again some more 2x4s, another barrel. Also as a follow-up to the West Penn Crossing area I used that grout method to create what would you know, hopefully appear to be a, an area where the trucks travel more frequently. Uh, these would be where the propane trucks come in to get loaded and their fueling rack is off layout implied by this pair of pipes that comes off the edge. And I also finished the fencing. I should have put the barbed wire on the top of this. I don't know that I'll go back and do it at this point. It really wouldn't have been hard to do while I was constructing it, but it would be really challenging now. But I even have little uh, lift pipes for the, the gates when they're locked in a closed position. These are permanently glued in the open position, but at least created some of the detail. And in hindsight, I probably should have gone a little thinner with the guy wire um, that comes diagonally. They actually look like it's thick enough. It could be a push pole, which would have been reversed. Those would come up from the, uh, the post and go up. These are supposed to be wires. I should have used a thinner wire, but again, not something I would revise at this point in time. And a very, very awful looking mock-up of what will be the Agway building. This will be a one of those older style buildings with the wooden loading dock. Didn't really do myself any favors here by making this building at a at an angle, so I'll have a very complex angle coming across the roof line, but that was one of the reasons I wanted to make the mock-up just to get a sense of you know how the scale of the building would work. I think it'll be okay, but it won't be the easiest to, to sort out. Also did some additional undergrowth in this area, also, you know, some 
some tires just use some vacuum hose from uh, the automobile store there's tires all out all throughout the layout at this point mostly close to roadways where people could toss them did the vegetation on this little knoll tied it into the fascia a little better redid the edge where the road comes into the fascia also made a couple of scratch-built crossing signs and did a second of two wire armature trees this one I used scale leaves on I think the other one I used uh, coarse foam so coming over from the Pullman standard all the way around to this spot we're almost done have a lot more vegetation to do on this hillside and then have to complete the Simpson tunnel entrance I do have a portal that's partially weathered. I'll have to probably notch that into the foam over here and over here. And my intent will be to build up this side, probably to come all the way up to the, the edge of the helix. So I'll really shroud the helix in this area. But then as you get around the side, I, I plan on leaving it open. I think I'll do something to frame it, whether I wrap it with masonite and you know cut windows in or just paint the structure that's there now. I haven't quite decided yet. But I do like the idea of leaving some of it open. And haven't made any more progress up here yet, but this will be the engine service facility. And I intend to add a third track. Uh, the whole engine service facility is, is planned to be code 70 hand laid. And I plan on building a three-way turnout um, from scratch as well. So that uh, will be an interesting challenge. We'll see how that goes. So that's about it in that part of the railroad we'll swing around here come back over into Falls Creek and have some updates here as well so I think previously <clears throat> I think previously I had stopped uh, just shy of the retaining wall with the vegetation so I've now finished that all the way on the back side of the Penn Central tracks While I covered up a decent amount of the rock outcropping, I think it creates a pretty realistic and nice effect. And here's an area where there's just been enough rock slides that the vegetation really couldn't get established. So now everything on the back side of the tracks is done. I can start working forward. And this spur here where the gondolas are, that serves the Burke Parsons Bowley creosote plant. And that's also intended to be hand laid code 70 as well as the turnout. So naturally I'm going to build my regular turnout first before I try and dip my toe into building a three-way turnout. But one thing I have done is completed and installed my scratch built crossing. And this was the, the good news about the crossing. Obviously, unlike a turnout, there's no moving parts. But this was relatively complicated in that this is actually a, a radius and an easement. So it's coming from uh, the B&O main line here is, is straight and is a gradual transition into a 23-inch radius, which loops around behind the scenery and down into the uh, upper staging yard. So that's a uh, basically a spiral curve on that side. And then the Penn Central line is a uh, tangent track so at least one of the tracks was straight uh, I'm not even sure what angle uh, intersection this is certainly they don't make a template or a jig for that what I did is I had laid out everything before with the side tracks just butted up against um, the main line and I laid a piece of paper down and just took a charcoal rubbing of the tops of the railheads and that's what I used to create the uh, the layout and built everything on top of that using print circuit board ties um, for every tie in the center I used PC boards but then once I got out of the, the really complex part of the track work I just did a tie every a PC board tie every five ties so here I've started to come back in and hand spike down wooden ties in between you can see a pair that I've stained over here I'm probably just going to airbrush the whole thing the the weathered rail tie color just to make sure the tops of the PC boards get consistent 
uh, and then I'll ballast it. But that was a really fun experience and it uh, worked out pretty well. I did come back in, you can see, with a jeweler's saw and gap uh, the two intersections of the diamond that would otherwise create a short. And then these two, the polarity is the same um, in terms of, of rail to rail. So I still need to come in and put some feeders in because I specifically am going to leave the rail joiners on six of the eight sides loose. The only ones I soldered are on the main line back here because we're in the 23 inch radius. So I soldered those uh, by removing some of the spikes in the flex track, soldered them while everything was straight and then reflexed the track back around uh, to avoid getting a kink at those two rail joiners. So still need to put in some feeders just to make sure I have continuity. I'm going to leave those two isolated crossings uh, dead. They're very short uh, and all of my mainline locomotives have capacitors in them so I don't anticipate any problem as long as I make sure I've got proper feeders to everything else. So that uh, is again uh, uh, feel very satisfied getting that done but the other thing it does is add some benefit to the operations here if you may recall in some of my other videos these two tracks down here, which are Penn Central's main in the back and Penn Central's, Penn Central's siding, the siding is intended to, to be a second operating uh, yard lead for the Du Bois yard, which is the three tracks right here. Uh, the other end of the yard can also be operated, but that requires using the B&O secondary main or main number two. Um, so I just wanted to have a yard that had flexibility to be operated from both sides. And without this crossing being installed, I couldn't get my Penn Central cars back into the staging area. So that was uh, fouling the yard lead down at this end. So that is now resolved. And I'll walk around. I'll have to turn a light on back there. But I'll walk around and show you that the Penn Central staging yard, which represents uh, Brookville, Pennsylvania, and points further west into Ohio, like Ashtabula, Ohio. Here is the other, si other side of that crossing. And I'll grab my light. So it comes up a ramp to get up over the other staging line. And I used to use shorter shims for my transitions. And a viewer a while back had suggested I try using the longer ones. And so I've done that here to basically transition down off of the cork, which actually softened the grade here, which is good. And then there are two tracks here, just one turnout. So it's a two-track staging yard. Uh, you can see the second track right there in the back. So it's about 16 cars worth of storage. And I've got my bus wire here and started fabricating my RC filters in a little bit more sophisticated fashion here on a, a piece of uh, perf board compared to my old style, which was a little bit less <laughs> fancy looking, but still works. So I'll probably transition to, to doing this uh, and replace some of the other ones or rebuild them to, to operate that way. They seem to be a little quieter when they're on a, a perf board because they do make a little bit of a noise. And again, so this lower track here is into the upper staging yard, which is East Salamanca, New York, and points north like Buffalo and Rochester. So happy to have that section done. So. Now, basically everything is done in terms of bench work and track, except for the hand, leg seg hand laid segments that I had mentioned, like here in the engine service facility. And the only other thing that's even remotely planned is where these hopper cars are. That could be the potential uh, future Indiana branch. So that would go behind the steps and then run over top of my workbench. Um, I don't think I'm going to pursue that, as I've mentioned before, until I get everything else done to my satisfaction. So the next chore here, after I finish all the, the feeders and ties and paint and ballast on that crossing, is to install, pull this out, it's right now temporarily flex track, it's not even, not even affixed right now permanently. Replace that with code 70 rail, which I already have, and all the ties, uh, and, and build that. And then I can start doing all the scenery here as well. Still have some buildings to build in Du Bois, um, and then I'll put some some ties along here because it was shortly uh, I'm modeling 74, and I think it was right around 72, 73 when they single tracked a portion of this area by taking out both railroads took out 
one of their mains. So they went from having to maintain four diamonds down to one, which certainly makes sense given the environment of railroading in the early 70s. It was uh, interesting as well, too, that the, uh, the tolerances on the guide rails through this crossing uh, worked out pretty well with the NMRA gauge, but when I ran an SD40 through it, uh, one of the axles on one of the trucks just hopped a little bit at one spot. Didn't derail, but you could see it every time it would just kind of hop and lift a little bit. As it turns out, that wheel set was slightly out of gauge, so nothing like a complex piece of track work to uh, manifest an out of gauge wheel set for you. So I was happy that it was a wheel set that was the problem and not the crossing. So that looks like most of the updates for now. And like I said, looking forward to doing some additional uh, hand laid work uh, starting right about here and, and running that out to the Burke Parsons plant. So more to follow. Thanks for watching.